On our previous video, I went through the process that I take to cut hexagons out of XPF foam using a Proxon Thermocut hot wire cutter. Once you have these hexes, then we need to make something out of them. Whether that be individual tiles, as you're seeing here, or one large detailed play surface, the methods that you bring those into being is essentially the same. Today, I'm going to detail a couple of different methods of construction and take you through the process from first assembly to a completed tile. Let's get started. So when we're talking about assembling hexes into tiles, the main thing we have to consider is the adhesive that we're going to use. For this first method, we're gonna be using a PVA glue for this. Now there's many types of PVA glues in the market, such as the ever so common Elmer's glue, but I've gravitated to a couple of different ones, mainly wood glue such as tight bond and weld bond. Now these types of glues have a little more going on for them than just your white PVA and do a much better job at creating solid joints. For the purpose of this demonstration, I'm gonna be using tight bond three. For this assembly, I'm gonna be using two other things. First, we are putting down a bit of parchment paper. This can be found in the baking section of your typical grocery store and gives it a surface that little will stick to. Please note, this is different from wax paper. We'll also be using a roll of paper tape or painter's tape. I'm gonna be using blue tape for this. First, tear off a piece of painter's tape that is long enough to cover several hexes joined end over end, like seen here. Next, take one of your hexes and place it on the tape like so, so that you have the flat end right there in line with the tape. This is going to be our scaffolding for building the tile. Next, take a tile and your glue and apply it in a thin layer over one edge as seen here. And don't drop the bottle. After this, you're gonna butt up the edge to the other and you're gonna press firmly and then you're gonna press downwards, forcing the tile into the painter's tape, allowing the tape to act as a sort of clamp. You can use another tile, another hexagon, to check and make sure that these are spaced properly. There is a bit of a gap, which is pretty common, but the glue will be holding that. Let's go ahead and do a few more of these. So we will go ahead and press in and press down, wiping off any excess glue that we run across. Next, flip the, uh, the tile over and apply another row or two of paper tape to cover the intersection of where we're gonna be applying more hexagons, like so. In this case, I'm going to apply two more layers and then flip the tile back over. With the additional tape, go ahead and take another hexagon and we're going to apply two sides. If you have any defe uh, defects like this, go ahead and use that with the glue to help fill them in. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, put two sides of glue here, slightly off camera, there we go. And we are going to press this into the corner like we did on the side and then press downwards to lock it into place. So I'll wipe that glue off here. Continue applying hexagons around until you have gotten to the size you want. You are going to have some of these hexes that have clipped corners. Just go ahead and make sure those are facing into a joint so you can apply some glue to that. So in this case, we have applied the last one. We'll wipe the glue off and force some of it into the joint. Uh, and there we have it. You will end up with some spaces in between at times with the way we are cutting these that can be unavoidable especially when we're doing mass creations of tiles let's go ahead and use this method and assemble a number of hex tiles using pva
So that is one method down, but we've got another one to go. The other way that I like to assemble these at this point, a way that I think is, while probably a little more expensive is a superior method, is going to be with hot glue, uh, hot melt glue, uh, it, some others may call it. Specifically, I'm gonna be using high temperature glue. Uh, and with that, we will be using the Sure Bonder Hot Glue Gun, a favorite of DM Scotty's everywhere here. I have purchased some hot glue in bulk, but it is still decently more expensive than using PVA. So if your budget allows for it, I think this is a superior method. So the method is going to be the same as the previous way, just that we don't need to worry about doing any kind of scaffolding with tape. We simply press it down and press together and the hot glue will join it up. We'll use another hexagon to make sure that it's, it's even there. And that's pretty much it. The other advantage to doing this is that you will have a much faster work time. PVA takes a long time to dry, to cure properly. You can be looking at maybe a day for it to cure as much as you really need, even longer for it to cure completely. This is done in a few minutes. One problem you will run across is the glue will want to squirt up through it and it is a little more annoying to clean off than PVA, but not so much so. The glue, if you allow it to stay in one location, will burn you. But if you get it on your fingers, uh, just quickly rub your fingers and it will cause the temperature to reduce rapidly and not burn you. However, that being said, please be careful. If you are concerned about the possibility of burning yourself, stick with a PVA glue of some sort. So let's go ahead and assemble a whole bunch of tiles using hot melt glue. We have our tiles assembled, at least most of the way here. We've got the ones that are made up with the hot glue and then the ones with the tape backing, the ones with the PVA. Uh, we're going to go ahead and, and peel off the backing on these for the next part here. What we're going to do is we're going to back the tiles in a more rigid material. It'll make them better. Um, better to work with. They'll have more weight and they'll be less likely to try and break at the joints here. So for our backing, we are going to be using strips of medium density chipboard. This is graphics uh, medium uh, chipboard. Uh, you can get it on Amazon pretty inexpensively. Uh, this is a favorite of Wylox everywhere. And we're going to be using tight bond glue. In this case, because chipboard soaks up glue really well, we're going to use this to help bond this to the back of the tiles. The objective here is going to be to cover the various joints with a bit of cardboard. This will both reinforce the entire thing and it will add weight to it. We're even going to do this for the singular tiles because this way they will have weight and they'll set up about the same width. So basically we're gonna apply some glue, we're gonna put the strip down and we're going to cut it to length. Now you can do this a couple of different ways here. This is a real rough measurement we see there. And we'll just cut it off with some scissors right on the end. I got a pair of heavy shears here. Voila, uh, the little edge bits you can tr trim off later or what I do later in this video, you'll see here is I'll, uh, I actually end up using shorter pieces. The important thing is that it will be on all four tiles and it will cover the joints on all of those. This will make it much more rigid. 
So we're gonna apply a strip of glue from edge to edge here, like so. And then we're gonna go ahead and spread that around. Uh, I'm gonna grab a popsicle stick since I have one handy, just so that we have contact with the entire surface when we place down the strip of chipboard. And we're gonna press and hold down until it tacks up. Now, we're gonna need to do some weighting down of these later. I'll show you that when we get to the, uh, the next part here. But that is basically all that's involved. For some of these, if you're gonna string them like this, you might end up getting little bits. Uh, yeah, you, you'll see here how I cut it, moved it, cut a little bit short and moved it back. But it's the same thing here. Pick a side, add some glue, thin it out or spread it around and then reapply your chipboard. Press it down, make sure it adheres, at least for the moment. And if it overlaps uh, external in the joints a little bit, we'll have to go back and trim those later. That's completely fine. This is a lot easier than placing this down on a, bo a chipboard and having to cut the entire section out. So for this, for the seven hex piece, we've got three sets of joints that we need to cover up. By laying down three strips, this will let us cover up um, the joints in both directions, giving us a lot more rigidity. Uh, as you can tell, these these pieces, I'm I'm not doing any any straight lengths. Uh, these were really really roughly cut out earlier. You know, just just as I was being a little bit bored here. Um, you, but you are going to end up having to use more glue than you expect. This is going to give us, uh, on top of everything else, uh, additional space behind it. Uh, so if we go in to fill stuff in, it'll cover up some of those gaps. Probably need some more glue here. All right, so you'll see that covers those. But another one up there, and that'll cover the middle. And on the bottom probably need a little more on that that edge right there so let's go ahead and pull that off and apply some more glue just like so spread it back around make sure we get sufficient coverage and let's stick that back down Try and move that so I don't have anything sticking out over the edge. I'm not worried about how it looks on the bottom. This is for reinforcement and for giving a little bit of weight and pushing it up a little bit above the surface. Uh, now, if you don't have even tiles, you're going to have to press a lot more, as you can see here. But that's unavoidable. So what I'm going to do now is we're going to go ahead and back a whole bunch of tiles. Uh, and then I am going to get these all pressed up for drying, and I'll be back in a second. Here is what I mean by pressing up everything here. I've got a series of boards here. These are just some foam core um, with some parchment paper to separate them and some weights that I've been using, uh, among other weights. Pressing down on top of this to keep everything flat because some of these are not entirely even and this will keep the, the board, chipboard press flat to the tile. You can see most of these are dried up at this point or dry enough and we just peel this off go to the next layer uh, have a little bit of fun trying to uh, roll that back up and give up on it and 
Here you see the uh, the next layer. I uh, got a few things that are sticking, but for the most part, everything seems to be in good shape. So to give you an idea what I mean about trimming these back here, I'm just taking a uh, utility knife and I am, while not in focus, it's a little better, just trimming into the corners. If it creates some chips and cuts like that, I'm not too worried about it. We're gonna end up sealing all of this later. Got to work on my on my camera camera work here, but you, you get the idea. Uh, you go back and any of the exterior edges that are sticking out, you just clean them back there. And these all fit together pretty decently, all things considered. So for over here, you just do the same thing. Just pull back on it. Don't use me as a guide for n your knife skills. Choose someone who's actually got some more skill on that here. But that's it. Th those are the mostly completed tiles. We still have a lot of work to go. Um, we're going to end up going through and taking these tiles and adding stuff onto them. Uh, so on the next video, we're going to be doing um, creating what I like to call grassland tiles or plains tiles, uh, where it is pretty straightforward. A little bit of rock sticking up, a little bit of a little bit of uh, of uh, grass, and we're going to use a few of these for that before we go into some additional tile types. Hope you've enjoyed, and I hope you've learned something today. If you have any questions, please leave in the comments. I'll be glad to answer whatever I can. And above all else, I want to thank you all for watching. You all have a great day.